vibrato the different types and really how to practice it and work on it to help develop your own vibrato I think the most important thing is uh, just to say just to, to think of it basically like your fingerprint you want to get that it, it's you and not a copy of anybody else and so although it's good to listen and pick up on the likes of BB King or Steve I or, or, or whoever uh, you know Eric Clapton these guys have a marvelous vibrato but it's very much their part of their sound and you recognize them because of that. So uh, I think it's just to be aware of some of the, of some, some of the, the variations in vibrato. And if you work in these, this will help develop uh, your, your own sound. So uh, we'll just have a look at uh, what, what we're going to do to practice. And uh, if you just work in these, hopefully this will help you. Thinking of uh, like a, first of all, like a classical player or a violin player, we might. Um, practice the vibrato uh, basically just holding the note but moving from slightly the hand from side to side so if I do this I'll say on a, a G note so I might just say hold the note and I'm just wobbling the, 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 the hand from side to side I'm actually keeping the finger still but concentrating on moving the hand That's one aspect. Another one would be up and down. And if I'm practicing this, I would tend to do it with my second or the third finger as opposed to my first. And say if I do it with my third finger, what I might do, in fact I know I do, do is I put uh, my other two fingers, my first and second finger on the fretboard on that same string. And just practice shaking it up and down. So that's basically the two ways. There is the the, uh, the round vibrato that Steve I uses, which is sort of goes around in little circles. But it's personally one I haven't worked on myself. But that's just a couple of ways to think of approaching your vibrato. A couple of other things you might take into consideration is where the hand is on the on the guitar or is the thumb. Is the thumb, you know, is the thumb at the back of the neck? Is the thumb over the top? Uh, or is the thumb hanging off? Basically doing this sort of like where you're shaking the hand. There's quite a lot of hand shake going on there. I know BB King would have, uh, would do that sort of thing, and Eric Clapton at one point was doing that quite a lot, uh, or in the nineties he was doing that, where the whole hand was shaking uh, on the neck of the guitar. So that's basically some of the, the ways to approach a vibrato. Now what we're going to do is we're going to think of two different ways 
of of, of uh, variations of this. One would be the, uh, the speed. So we might do a slow vibrato. Or a fast vibrato. Again, just practice those various ways. Um, another thing would be practice would be basically whether it's a, a narrow or a wide vibrato. So you might play, which is very little, or which is a lot. So it's whether it's a narrow or a wide vibrato. So then you've got combinations. You'd have slow and narrow, slow and wide. Fast and narrow, fast and wide, whatever. There's lots of combinations and everything in between, but it's just really down to yourself just to sit with a note and work on that. Now, that's just playing as a note where we're just vibrato on the note. But what if we decide you want to bend the note? So then this gives us a couple of more options. When you bend the note, you can go into the vibrato straight away. Say I'll bend up to A from the G. So what I was doing was just going into the vibrato as soon as I bent up the note. Or you might bend the note and then add the vibrato. We do it up the fretboard here, for instance. So you can add the vibrato once the note has been bent for a while, or straight away. So these are all little subtleties, and all things worth working on, concentrating on, thinking about when you're practicing. And hopefully they'll just add uh, a new dimension or, or uh, go somewhat to helping you get, get that vibrato working.